As discussed in last week's Restless Rant Soapbox, Ashley's story peaked with no resolution, and without even the smaller soapy payoffs many were hoping to see come out of it. We still don't know what Martin did to her, and the entire scenario involving Tucker running to her rescue was, in a word, lame. No payoff, and we were left listening to a newcomer reflecting at length on the death of his evil twin. The silver lining, or perhaps not to some, is that the story isn't over. We've a new mystery to unravel surrounding what happened to Ashley when she was young, however disturbing. But whether the audience will be a part of that remains to be seen. Ashley has yet to be on screen at the clinic. The takeaway? One has to retrain your brain to appreciate the buildup and anticipation and find entertainment value in imagining what the payoff could be. Knowing the chances are excellent that it's never gonna play out the way it should. Big drama is found in big payoffs, but that seems to be elusive these days. With all of that said about payoffs, I love a good twist, and Victor being revealed as Audra's secret investor was a dandy. We knew he was coming after Jack, and what better way than to have a go at Jabot. But the mustache won't be content to leave it at that. As we've already seen, he's coming for Jack's family as well. Trying to lure Kyle away to Newman, and with something in mind for Diane. If he doesn't have a scheme to leave Jack's marriage in shambles, I'd be surprised. Or perhaps he'll have Michael encourage Diane to oust her husband from his own company. Big, messy trouble. In Related, Tucker poured his heart out to Audra to absolutely no avail, and it was delicious. How fun to see a potential vixen actually come into her own. But will it last? Not if Tucker has his way. As we saw in the preview, it looks like he'll pull out all the stops to put a halt to Otter's takeover with a classic soap trope, faking a heart attack. Taking pointers, perhaps, from Bold and Beautiful's Katie, who collapsed at a wedding to keep the bride and groom apart, Tucker will keel over his laptop as the meeting of Glissade's board of directors gets underway, thus impeding the vote on whether or not to sell. Not only will it delay the proceedings and buy him time, but I'm betting he's hoping to garner some sympathy from Audra to boot. Some may think Lily is immune to Billy's charm offensive, but I'm not one of them. In just a single happy hour, he got her to agree to back his bid to add the Abbott name to the company. She's still unconvinced about teaming with him to take over and limit Devon's powers. But if he keeps needling about her being scared to take the leap, he might eventually win her over. In the meantime, Lily and Billy having their heads together, and her supporting Billy's proposal to change the company name, is bound to stick in her brother's craw, which should play nicely into Billy's plan by creating tension between the siblings. Could get messy. The only business that seems to be moving forward tickety-boo is Sharon's, and that's because we never see or hear about it. She will make an appearance for Joshua Morrow's special standalone episode, however, in which Nick and Sharon look back on their love story, along with a delighted Mariah, Tessa, and Faith. Speaking of Mariah and Tessa, they were trotted out for Pride Month as supporting characters in the developing romance between Claire and Kyle. While it was a nice nod to Mariah's past to have her and Claire discuss the similarities in their lives, there's no denying that Tyria has no storyline except as talk toes for other characters and an occasional appearance to share a kiss, so the powers that be can't be accused of homophobia. As for Claire and Kyle, there's no zing to this pairing whatsoever as long as the writers are going to keep Claire as a one-dimensional, saccharine sweet, pod person with no layers to her. The only thing that would make this interesting is if she has to deal with a combative and jealous summer and her dark side emerges.